What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house. In today's video, I want to go over why I'm getting a couple of booster cases of King's Court and sitting on it long term. Typically, I don't play a role in the market. And I am not a financial advisor slash investment channel. I don't know your bankroll, your situation, how you could be spending your money better or worse, depending on what you're into. I'm personally into Yu-Gi-Oh! And I want to play this long term as I would have taken my own advice on first edition legendary duelist six or Toon Chaos, which actually would have taken booster boxes out of people's mouth with how that was shorted and allocated. But I think instead with King's Court, it is just grossly underordered looking around. I brought this up in a previous market watch and I love to be fully transparent. So I want to dive in and big three deals still has booster cases up on their website. Extremely cheap. You can use code what's good five for 5% off there. Now I've seen them up their customer service, up the amount of cards they've ordered, and they work with some of the most wholesome Yugi tubers like the crush cards but if you're buying over here and using code what's good five you can get it down to 57 dollars a box when you're ordering their booster cases and everywhere else i'm seeing it run out they do have individual booster boxes if you want to go in but those are about 70 dollars a piece shipped and then you look over at troll and toad their boxes are now 70 dollars and i think they only give free shipping on singles but that's why i love having store credit at troll and toad you can use code what's good five in the notes of the buy list and up the up the order and they already give a huge bonus on trade in credit that's why i love having actual troll credit to sit on but then ybm is sold out you have gamers choice sold out and i don't think they plan to relist because they typically go huge with singles they plan to eventually integrate singles into their websites and you see child productions one of the top sellers on tcg player this is his site and i don't think he's going to redo sealed and tier zero's prices are up mainly because of that international foot traffic you have australia south america with distros really railing them and it just doesn't feel good so this is one of the only outlets for people to get better prices on product and because of those huge orders they end up having to up the price just to keep some in stock so big three deals is looking super strong right now as one of the last places to get this now let's go over the pros and cons why am i going in why am i actually eating the konami kool-aid yes not drinking eating the crushed powder that they put out because we don't have a lot of solid information well first off a grossly under ordered set where all the pseudo vendors are probably dipping out after being burned by blazing vortex after after losing their context from bailing on Genesis Impact and Ancient Guardians, you're going to have a lot less people in the sealed game that have run over to Pokemon and those juice distro prices. King's Court is in the Toon Chaos slot also. I do not think it is Toon Chaos 2.0, but I think some things from Toon Chaos will transfer over here that will be favorable. I don't think it's going to moon rocket like Toon Chaos, but I think it will double to triple perhaps. So let's read through this. First off, they are comparing the new world premiere card to Magician soul and also have magician souls bolded sometimes a bolded card will not end up in the set but a lot of the time it does and it creeps in and magician soul is a dm era card however konami also likes to tie and play on set descriptions and pull sets together and this could be hinting at legendary duelist season three instead but magician souls collector rare that wouldn't be a bad one. Neither would Dragoon, which is also DM era, but those could be completely elsewhere and not be in here. Th that would be a cherry on top of the cake. So I don't necessarily think the engine will also be metagame either. It could be rogue. It could be casual. Chaos was a fan favorite meta and it ends up being rogue right now. Chaos space isn't taking over despite how insane it was, but I do think the archetypes in here will turn out all right. And also we see people spending money based off of them in today's market and we'll get into that which isn't you you announce any support and old things get bought out that it's more so the amount that is shocking but they also compare it to being an engine for slifer the sky dragon and bold him in here for the upcoming structure decks meaning they could try to extra tie this dm era set in with god cards which always do sell well especially on amazon what's more shocking here and really overlooked is they say the themes introduced or supported in Legendary Duelist Season 2 are getting brand new cards and all of those by far are fan favorites also lightning overdrive and konami's been loving to use side sets in order to introduce the protagonist and antagonist ace monster cards that have been pieced out through time such as your shooting tg star dragon and your red dragon archfiend and 
uh, ghosts from the past. But when it comes to this, that could easily hint towards us perhaps getting F number zero utopic future dragon for the Lightning Overdrive, which would be a huge card to speculate on. But also with Legendary Duelist Season 2, that's Blue Eyes, that's Trains, that's Cyber Dragons, that's Harpies, all super favorable archetypes along with Galaxy, which people eat up immediately. None of those archetypes are bad, and any of them would be super welcome to see, and with it being DM Era, if it is a Blue Eyes-esque card introduced in here, that'd be insane. Also, they have more control, I think, over the Collector Rares in this set than you would have in the typical side set. That's why the side set Collector Rares seem really sad and tied a lot further into the archetypes where in Toon Chaos, we can see Konami's TCG office was spot on. Hand traps that you play three of like Gamma, cards, uh, uh, early pull, by the way, Pot of Extravagance, which was then reprinted later in the Megaton and is still holding up as a chase, so we could see one early hype card end up in this set, King's Court as well, and then tons of just amazing picks for the Collector Rares, Black Luster Soldier for GOAT format, Stardust a fan favorite, and they go over in the set description and say that Collector Rares of World Premiere and previous unreleased cards from Japan, as well as classic and competitive favorites. This line gives me the most life to roll the dice on this because you only need four of those collector rares to end up being really good for this set to probably double over time. Even though panning out as a whole it's the individual collector rares that are becoming money and pulling things up by the bootstraps in a sense and pulling it along and yeah, Black Luster Soldier doing great for itself. Tomb Black Luster Soldier actually just as a collectible great but all their other are doing especially the, for the first edition runs amazing for themselves if they are a decent card so i think there will be at least four decent cards within king's court that are collector rares out of the new cards which is very interesting to also see that an import card will be in the collector rare slot at least and that's why i think either in here or in the mega tens you could see cross out designator but i don't like picking that outlier it feels like you're calling for needle fiber which set will end up in it i don't want to say they cross out designator specifically for the set but that would be a hope that that's the import they're alluding to i would not count on it all these gambling parts aside and the poker theme of it i see that money has been spent and dove in on the old school ultimate rares granted elemental energy is an insane set first edition ultimate rare for queen's knight is near 300 now which was not a cheap buyout they were hundreds before this king's knight is at 700 for a first edition and jack's knight which actually had a monarch meta in the past has one left at 110 dollars and once that's gone there's not a TCG player. So the actual amount of money pumped into the old cards between their collectability and then their retrains coming to give it hype, it's more understandable, but still, the amount going through is eyebrow raising to say the least. So when you factor in everything together, though, you have the allusion to Legendary Duelist Season 2 and none of the archetypes. If you get a single competent card for any of those archetypes, that's a great chase pull. Then you also have the hint at OCG imports. Then you have the hint at those being collector rares too. Then you have the classic and competitive favorites to where I don't think it'll be Toon Chaos good, but you only need four instead of the freaking eight that they got for this to probably double in price. That's why I'm rolling the dice. But let me pull up the cons I have written down to. First off, you have zero ways to tell if this engine is going to live up to even be rogue or if it's just going to completely flop and it's monster of theseus 2.0 you're also gambling on there being at least three to four really good collector rares for it to take off and do well and then you're also possibly sitting on this for a very long time where you could be flipping your money in a different way and making more money off of it such as the megatons might be a much shorter investment than having to sit on king's court but what i do like about this overall is that konami tcg is getting more say in what does get collector rare rather than the ocg office just telling them not to collect a rare freaking cyber emergency or whatever happened there with genesis impact to miss that opportunity it's likely very under ordered seeing it already sell out at a ton of the big boys i think tons of pseudo vendors have pulled out of the game meaning even less sealed of this will be out there and gambled on and i do even hope that konami like uses this product for some kind of special rarity past collector rares i don't necessarily think that'll be here the megatons would fit like millennium secret way better than this set if that would be it like 
but I, I just don't see it necessarily happening. And then, yeah, just all of the set description being this powerful, this positive, and it being in Toon Chaos' slot, even if it doesn't turn out to be the best archetype, I think the creation of the pack will help elevate it over time. But what do you guys think of King's Court? Will it be a total flop? And am I seeking my money into a pit hole and it's not going to get there? Or does the flag start to go up for you as well when it's disappearing early? It's not around. You have very limited options to still get cases. I think the math starts to add up personally, but let me know what you think. Thank you for watching today's video. I like doing these discussions a lot more, having actually written notes and being able to go over the points of how I feel about product, even though it's early. We don't have a lot to go on. You are gambling if you are ordering this set. You are going off of a little bit of information and what is happening ahead of time. Do be aware of that if you're sinking in, but it definitely does seem worth it to me to go ahead and get a couple of booster boxes, if not a case, to sit on sealed, not to necessarily rip open. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this conversation. And man, I'm... Uh, I'm itching on my own gamble, and I have a problem not opening sealed, so I'm going to have to shove this in a dark closet until I'm ready to sell. But hey, if any sponsors want to send me some King's Court to open, I'll gladly open it. Otherwise, you will not see me opening the boxes. You will not see me selling singles unless it's from a sponsored box in the Discord. Sometimes it like, goes from the past. I sold some of the singles to people. I will not be playing in the secondary market other than to sell this as sealed cases, most likely in the future. And another approach, actually, if you go in on cases, because like people will crack the chase card and sell the rest of the case the only way i will sell individual boxes either is if multiple people want boxes from me later on and we sell enough for 12 and i videotape the opening of the case for those people and i allocate the boxes ordered to each person so that it is completely random and you know no chases have been tampered with i want to be full 100 transparent with anybody anytime i am investing anything into the market and if i am making a sale Thanks for watching, everybody.